First, uh, I just like to say thanks for the, the welcome. You know, we uh, uh, went to a lot of different communities, and it took us uh, two years to get to here. And I apologize, we we uh, uh, you know been spread out trying to go to different communities, and we wrap these meetings up to uh, uh, get a lot more information out there and answer questions to folks about the, this one cent sales type proposal. But by all means, if there's any other questions you have tonight, you know, we're here for, for anything and everything. Uh, I'd like to recognize all of our elected officials that's here other than the commission. Tommy Haynes, uh, uh, John Lida, school board, uh, Victor Manning, uh, and Chef Phillips. Uh, if you have any questions for any of these folks, you know, we're, we're pretty informal when we get to, to the question and answer part of things. And uh, we're going to go through our regular meeting, uh, our agenda, and then I think we're going to have a uh, uh, snack, and uh, then we'll go into our uh, committee meeting portion. And uh, I'll turn it over to Matt. Thank you. We'll call this uh, April 20th Jackson County Commission work session to order. Have a roll call. <coughs> District 1, Mr. Lumpy. Present. District 2, Mr. Gentle. Present. District 3, Mr. Miller. Present. And District 4, Mr. Level. Present. The chairman is also present. Okay, we have a quorum present. We'll have our invocation by Mr. Porter. <laughs> God, our Father, we're blessed to be here in this beautiful community on this beautiful spring morning, this spring afternoon. God, we're thankful for our blessings. We're thankful for the people that live in, in this community and throughout Jackson County. We pray that you'll be with the men that uh, represent uh, us in the county, and we pray that you'll give them wisdom and discernment so that they can make good decisions for the county. We pray that they'll take all the information that they get today and we'll uh, put it together and make good decisions. So God, we thank you for everybody that's here and all the families that are represented. We thank you for the food that's been prepared and those that help prepare it. So God, we pray you'll continue to watch over us and bless us. And always, we ask that you be with those men and women in the armed services, that you'll watch over them and their families and keep them safe. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 here in the county 
and in some areas where they don't have service. So it will be another little while out before we get our truck in. Our, our containers have came in and we haven't received a truck. But uh, we'll be offering a, a roll-off service to anybody in the county that would need it or would like to have it. Uh, and uh, we will need to, I guess, get a contract uh, together to kind of outline the things in the last page in there. Any questions or comments from the commission on this? Now, where would the uh, list for prohibited items be placed? Will it be in their contract where they know? Yes, it's in the contract. When, not, not when in? Uh, we're sending it up uh, to Mr. Porter's working on the contract for us with a few little things we, you know, put on there. But when you come to uh, rent the roll-off or even maybe call it in by phone and sign for it, somebody must be there to sign for it if we deliver with a, a credit card number over the phone, but you must sign for it. <clears throat> You'll get a list of the do's and don'ts that we can do with those containers, what we can put in there and what we can't put in there, and then you'll also get a copy of the contract that will come with it. Can we see what it would cost to get some, uh, uh, maybe some stickers to put on there that has those items, because I know like on the construction site, if I read the dump and put it there and I got six different trays, you know. We've talked about that and we will be putting their, our phone number and our, our, our stickers on there. And then we could put a set of rules and regulations on the back of it and we will do that, yes sir. Any other questions or comments? All right. If there's no objection, then we'll put this on the agenda next Monday for uh, approval. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Next item regarding lawnmower for the parks department, Mr. Barnes. Yeah, we're not having good service out of the lawnmower. One right now is about five years old, and the other one we have to deal with is about 15 years old. So we've got one real good one about last year before last. Uh, we went over the budget Thursday, uh, and we got some money left in uh, line 231, the fire maintenance building land. We want to I'd like to transfer enough out of it to go into repairs and maintenance motor vehicles line 233 to purchase a new lawnmower. I got a quote on one. It's around 80, about 8400 dollars. What was the cost of one? To what, sir? What was the cost? About eighty four hundred dollars. And that's with the it was around the ten thousand dollars more, but with the counties, you know, the state prices. It's the same brand as the last that we bought it. No. It's a uh, <coughs> it's a, a X1 Super Z. They're uh, X Mark. No, it's not X Mark. It's a uh, Hustler. Hustler. I also got with uh, City of Scottsboro. They use them, and they say they get good service out of them. And I also talked with the guy that takes care of uh, the trailer, big trailer park there in town, and he gets good service out of it. K and K Trailer Park. <coughs> This will be bought locally? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes, for Jack's fan. Uh, Jack and Farmers Co-op. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, sir. The, uh, and this, what you're wanting to do is just move funds from uh, other there. items that you're not going to be utilizing? Yes, sir. Okay. And so uh, that's the amendment that will be required if we do this, just moving it from other line items. Can you plan on keeping the one that's 15 years old? No, we'll, we'll probably put it on good deals. Which everything's been doing good for us on that. So. But, yeah. You know, it's still, a, I mean, it'll get you by, you know, and, but it's just not reliable. Any other questions or comments? All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next item, and if there's no objection, we'll place that on the agenda for next Monday, I saw. Uh, next item is quotes on the docks, the electrical work. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't know if he's one of y'all's got a copy of this. I put it in the mail slot. Two quotes. We've seen them. Uh, we don't have it with us, but we've seen them. Okay. So that's two quotes I could only get to read for the rewiring of ADOC. That's that's not going to be in this expansion we're going to have down at the park. And uh, as Mr. Hodges knows, we've had some complaints about the electrical and that kind of thing on ADOC. You know. Last time we got bids on this, it was really anywhere from 110000 to 120000 So. We came back, modified some things, using some existing stuff we have. Now, this would be all your wiring, uh, some boxes, and, and those, uh, four or 400 out boxes, and those kind of things. Disconnect. Everything would be new on that. Based on the thing we're using is the 
existed meter bases and the conduit. This would have to be a budget amendment. Uh, we don't have enough in the park to budget anymore. No. Uh, and, you know, right. Looking at uh, Fund 116, our capital improvement, that's where we probably would get, but understanding where we might be at the end of the year on that, I think we may need to, to take a little bit deeper look at where this could be funded. It is a, an issue that needs to be addressed um, uh, as quickly as possible, but we need to make sure that we can find the a funding source that's not going to hurt either. So um, I don't know if uh, there's any, if there are any cash balance left in the parks department. Is there, Mr. Manning? Mm -hmm. Cash balance. Does, does this include fiber optic? Does this include the fiber optic internet? Yes. Just like <coughs> it's just like What about the internet problems we're having? I haven't had any complaints in about a month now. Yeah, we have some changes. We have, yeah, I mean, and, I know Mr. Hodges, I could, you know, he got things more rolling probably more than I did. But they changed some things out. He knows a little more what to talk about than I did. So he got uh, some things rolling on that. I hope, I hope we don't have no more problems. But you know, Wi Fi is Wi Fi, so, you know, it may be good, it may not be good one day. Overall, you, it, that problem's kind of gone. Overall, well, I, I've not had no complaints. Any other questions on this? <coughs> I would like to take some more time to study the funding, so uh, if there's no objection, we'll hold off on putting this at the next meeting and maybe put it at the next work session. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the final items regarding the maintenance director, as uh, you all know, uh, Mr. Jerry McClendon is uh, retiring at the end of this month, uh, which will leave a vacancy in that position. As opposed to hiring someone, I would like to ask that we uh, move an individual in the maintenance department up to that position, and it will be a great 10-step one, and we would not replace uh, that individual place. So we are, uh, again, this is part of that, the retirement incentive. Uh, we will not be refilling the place that uh, uh, is vacated if we fill this. I would like to ask if we do this, though, that we give this person a six-month probationary period just to make sure it all works out well. Uh, and you have a copy of the job description in your package. Uh, this is, there's some modifications I'd like to make to that, but I wanted to go ahead and give it to everybody. If you have any recommendations or things that you think need to be changed, if you would, let me know so that we can have that next week so we can prove the job description and hopefully prove the uh, personnel change as well. So any questions or comments on that at this time? I would, I would, Mr. Chairman, I would like to see in there somewhere that the uh, uh, employee be a working uh, part of the program, uh, not just a supervisor or a foreman, right. but a hands-on working supervisor. Okay. Yeah, I, I believe this individual definitely will be, and, but we'll, we can include that for sure in the job description. Any other comments or questions? All right. If there's no objection, then we'll place that on the agenda the next uh, meeting as well. Okay. So that includes our um, items for our uh, regular agenda. We'll, we'll take a quick break and eat, but I would like to go real quickly go through our department heads and see if we have any final reports, and then we'll have the elected officials' reports after the uh, community meeting. So, uh, Mr. Widener? Yes, I have one thing I wanted to talk to you all about. If I can spoke spoke to each of the individual. Of course, you all aware we've got a lot of late trip projects going on right now, and We've kind of been shut out on the paving due to the wintertime weather. We've got, uh, got three paving jobs fixing to start, uh, category 67, 43, and 5. We've also got a bridge uh, project fixing to start in the Miller District up on uh, category 44 uh, over Dry Creek. Um, we, you know, we don't have a lot of personnel to handle all this, and we feel like we, with the three paving projects, we, we've got two actually to handle it. Three paving projects and a bridge project. We'd like to look at uh, hiring a consultant to uh, take care of the bridge inspections. This consultant would be paid for through a trip funds. It would be no cost to the county uh, for this. It would come off of the, our total sum of a trip funds that we got, which is about ten million dollars. Uh, <clears throat> this is a uh, this bridge project is about a six hundred and fifty thousand dollar project, and uh, typically uh, the uh, these consultant fees normally run about fifteen percent. Uh, to handle all the inspection, all the estimates, uh, basically being out there with them all the time. So 15% of that amount is about $95,000. That would 
that's a not to exceed price. It could be way as depending on how long it takes to get the bridge between them. So uh, it, it would not exceed that. If uh, if the commission is favorable with this, uh, then what I need to do is uh, uh, I'll not will have to approve this prior to the commission approving. So if y'all uh, are favorable with this, then I, uh, this week I'll be working with I'll not getting this information to them, hopefully having it ready for you know, next week to give commission approval to them. Uh, it's not a promise that they kind of hinge on what they do. But, uh, we just feel like it, <coughs> we're not going to be able to adequately, adequately keep these projects inspected because we, we just don't have enough people uh, with all them fixing to start up. Any questions on that? The 15% uh, that set aside for that, Mr. Wagner, there's no chance of it going over. You said that's a not to exceed. That's not to exceed. Mm -hmm. Like the problem of getting the bridge test, where they had to take out part of the bridge deck and stuff like that, that would affect that. Okay. <coughs> it's a total, total contract amount. Of course, like the problem of getting to it is, they had to. They had to pay for that contract, had to pay for that. So the contract amount is still what it was set to be. So it's still the second stone is at 15 cent or less. Thanks, sir. Mr. Robinson? Uh, yeah, I'd also like to mention everybody, too. Last year we started a, a recycle program, just small, to let it build up. And we now have received in four, new, four more new recycle trailers. And I'd like to discuss with y'all or talk to y'all about, you know, locations we might, we're going to maybe decide to put those four we got in now and uh, maybe leave it to the, if the commissioners would like to put one in their area or they want us to choose or, you know, how we may set that up. Yeah, if, if, if anyone has an idea, um, let, let myself and Ms. Robinson know and uh, we can work it that way. But that would work fine too. Just next week or two so we can start with those plates, I guess. Mm -hmm. The ones we have located now is at Stevenson, Dutton, and Woodville. So, those cutters are ready to go. Yes, sir, they're ready to get put out. Uh, Mr. Barnes? Uh, we're done with all the topo down at the park, so should be saying something on that pretty quick. We should have some drawings and stuff like that for you. So, well, he finished that up last week, so hopefully we'll get something on it. Mr. Porter? I don't have it. Mr. Manning? No. Okay. Uh, then we'll uh, we'll go ahead and recess for uh, uh, maybe 15, 20 minutes, let everybody uh, get some snacks, and we'll mingle a bit, and then we'll start back up, uh, and we can continue to enjoy it. Do you have anything? No, he, he knew that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was including the elected officials. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll break for a few minutes, do that, and then we'll get back to business and get into the community meeting portion. So we'll take a quick recess. But yes, we, we need to do a better job of putting that out there on, on the web. It's kind of, again, working on something that makes it easy for us to do that. Other questions? How, how do you decide as to which road you're working for? The process that we use right now is based off of uh, what the, the, uh, our public works employees submit. You know, as they're out working, they'll submit information on roadways, and then we come up with a scale. Is it 1 through or 0, zero through 5? Zero. 0 through 10. Uh, the ones on the lower, obviously, are the worst shape, correct? Um, and we try to work on those ones that are in the worst shape first. Uh, you know, if you've got... I think last year we did all the what zeros, ones, and twos, and, and threes, and threes uh, uh, that we had on that list at that time, um, which was again only eight miles of roadway that we did. We probably got several you'd think which should be on the zeros, one, twos, and threes. Uh, uh, but if it, you know, sometimes it may be based on the number of people. If it's a really bad road, it just really depends on on that portion. But the first thing we look at, the most important thing, is kind of how bad is that road. If it's on that zero one two three, then that's what we'll get to. This year, we actually don't have any funds set aside. Uh, again, due to where we're at and what we spent last year, I don't know that we're going to have the funds to pave anything locally this year um, uh, until our capital improvement fund builds back up a little bit, and then maybe we can spend a few more dollars. So it's it's mostly based off that scale. Uh, 
And if you have a road that you think is, you know, falls under that, let us know and our guys as they're out there will take a look at that and see, you know, try to submit that where they think it needs to be. Yes. I wanted to make sure I got this right. A debt is what you owe. It's like a loan that you've taken out and you've got monthly payments. But a deficit is what you project and what you want to spend. It's what we have budgeted to spend. A deficit, you know, what we have now, the deficit, we have uh, uh, basically what seven point five million dollars in revenue with seven point eight million dollars in expenses. Now what we're saying is that we can cut those expenses to meet that revenue, but we're gonna have to cut services even further to do so. That's the conundrum we're in right now. We can cut services uh, to where you're either gonna have to wait longer or we're gonna close certain days at the courthouse, whatever the case may be, uh, cut those services back to meet that revenue source. And of course with with paving we're turning a lot of roads to dirt because we can't pay them. So what we're asking for is we've cut as much as we feel we can cut without really biting into services uh, too much and hurting the citizens of Jackson County. That's why we're asking for the sales tax so that we can, we can not only cover that remaining deficit that's in place, but also take care of a lot of the, uh, the things that we're just not able to do that really need to be done, such as paving roads, providing resource officers, Sounds helping like the fire department. like you said, the future. Right, exactly, the future. Can I respond to that? Yeah. There's actually two different ways to answer that. There's a projected deficit and there's an actual deficit. Last year we passed a $900,000 projected budget deficit and we finished the year with what, $450,000 is what we actually spent. Uh, so we cut $400,000 off of a, what we had projected their deficit to be. This year, you know, we passed a $300,000 budget deficit and then we got to cut on the and lose taxes like a month later, so it's going to be hard for us to come in under what we projected. When will this start, the tax? It, it, our plan, it's actually should be dropped in the legislature this week. Um, and if it goes through that process, what we hope is that we'll be able to have an election in September for the people to make that decision of whether we're going to have it or not. If the people decide to, to approve this tax, then the goal would be to start it in January. Now, understanding if it does pass in September, we'll have two options on the table. We'll have our cut plan and we'll have our moving forward plan. So we'll initiate whichever plan based on the results of that, even though we know our taxes won't begin until uh, uh, January. So we'll get, we'll wait through this season, this holiday season, and hope to start it in January after all that's done. Yeah. Uh, what does Scottsboro, do they get any of this sales tax or it just all goes to the county? The one we're talking about? Yeah, well, passes. that's the big thing. Right now, uh, uh, we get nothing. The county gets nothing. Currently, the city of Scottsboro has 3% in place, so they're receiving a good chunk of it. What we hope to do with this 1%, it would all come to the general fund, but we want to help not just Scottsboro, but Bridgeport, Stevenson, Hollywood, Pisgah, Dutton, uh, and all the communities outside of incorporated areas, like I said, in industrial and, and community development. So everyone's going to benefit. It's kind of the, as I've said before, a rising tide raises all ships. And people get laugh at me and get tired of that, I know. But, but that's really what we want to do. I think if you, again, if you look at counties that have that type of ability to invest, you see a much stronger county. And that's what we want is a county that can participate in that. So the Scottsboro directly know that we won't be writing them a check every month for a certain amount as we won't be any community. But you'll be Right. What we hope is that we can assist and, and improve, uh, you know, their economics and whatever else as we go through. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Does Scottsboro help the county? Yeah, the Scottsboro has worked with us uh, over the past couple of years. We've had some good relationships. They've helped us on a few uh, projects, small projects, um, and I think we've got a pretty good relationship, uh, building an even better relationship, I think, with the council too, to, to help us out with some things. So they are uh, stepping up. Uh, where the county's needed some help. There have been some things we've been unable to do out in the county where they went ahead and offered to step in for us because they've had the equipment or the ability to do so. And, and we see that, you know, we've seen that from, again, Stevenson and Bridgeport too, uh, so two of the other larger communities um, where we've supported them, but they've also supported us. And that's what, that's what we want to build. We want to build something where it's not just about one individual community, it's about the community as a whole. That's what our job is as a county commission to make this about the community as a whole, and that's what we want to do. What's happening with the Goose Pond project and all the speculation about the hotels and all that stuff going on out there? 
that's and more which will bring revenue in yeah. and come together. And and that that's more of a city project. Um, it's from my understanding of it, they had one developer that was working to to uh, make that happen. He never came up with the funding, so they're working with the second developer now. Right now, it's open. If a developer wants to go, if you want to go and, and develop that project, they I think they'd be glad to work with you. Money, and I'll do it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, so uh, hopefully, we'll see something happen with that. Um, Something like that, again, that would be, those are the things we want to work towards, things like that, but we also want to work towards uh, industrial development, you know, companies coming in and, and bringing in good paying jobs, but again, the focus on that, that doesn't help us with our funding wise, we still have to provide the resources, but something like that wouldn't affect us from a financial standpoint as far as the county financials go. Uh, it so, still brings tourism and yeah. it brings... Well, we don't get any of those dollars, so unless it's gas tax, we don't get any type of dollars because we don't receive any sales tax now. So, like I said, if, if they built that hotel, uh, they won't be staying at County Park for that, but uh, the only but thing... But if they go shopping at Walmart or... Right. We don't get any dollars that, that come from that. Do you get any percentage? No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Our major is, uh, revenue is property tax and DDN loop tax, and then it goes down from there. Those are two major revenue streams for the general. <coughs> and, you know, the tag fees and the license fees and stuff that Matthew mentioned that doesn't add up to a whole lot of money. Well, I know we had the, uh, Mr. Bailey and Mr. Parsons and a couple of you others came to our meeting a couple of months ago and we talked about the challenges, especially up here on the mountain, our smaller communities and like Rosalie, we're not incorporated, which right there really causes us to have challenges or miss out on any opportunities for jobs because we can't offer any protection per se for businesses coming into our little areas right. to generate revenue and again jobs and, and that's why you see a lot of folks incorporate but that's why we another reason why we feel this this tax is important on the county level because we don't have the resources to provide that right now uh, we, we've tried to support several water projects but water and gas are two important things if you want industry and those are things that we want to support to be able to support so that we could bring businesses uh, to this area. I know that uh, uh, Dust Rogers with the EDA has been working with some of the uh, uh, agencies around to, to see, you know, about gas, bringing gas lines in. Um, so some efforts are there. But uh, again, if we had the resources to really put some dollars into it also, I think you'd see that development happen a lot quicker. Uh, one thing too, the chairman brought up about high-paying jobs. Uh, when we were running, that's one of the first things I heard. Uh, and I know when he spoke to Dust Rogers at the EDA, he's told me on many occasions that he's had these company executives riding them around, and once they seen the site they wanted to, to look at buying or building, they wanted to go out in the county and ride around. Well, good Lord, don't take them to the good say some of our roads are terrible. It's embarrassing. So it's kind of hard to sell Jackson County to these executives if they come in and there's pothole, 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 pothole <coughs> everywhere. So, you know, we, we got to do something. You know, if a Volkswagen, just use them for example, dropped right here and had 4,000 employees, we don't receive any funding to keep our infrastructure up. So the roads by them 4,000 people would just be destroyed. And we have no money to go pave them and fix them. We, we need a little more gas tax, but not enough. Yeah, the, the, well, yeah. It, don't, it don't really cover enough to do anything. Well, in line with what you're saying, if a company like that came in too, you have to have the amenities offer them. Right. And for like to put in the development, what amenities do you have to offer them in terms of restaurants and cultural events and things like that? And so those are the challenges. There. Right. And again, us in a small community, not incorporated, um, <coughs> You know, I mean, I, I, I get where you all are coming from, and we appreciate everything you're doing, but... Well, that's what we want. We just want to take us to that next level. Yeah. I think we've been stagnant for years. You know, we feel like we've done our responsibility by cutting the budget and trying to get our, our money in line, being responsible with, with what we do have. Right. But we've just come to a point where we're saying, hey, you know, there's, like Mr. Venable said, there's, there's more going out that's coming in. And unless we decide to cut the courthouse, shut it down to three days a week, and instead of eight miles, go four miles of road paving, that's going to be, you know, there's not a whole lot of other ways we can balance this budget. And, and 
you know, like I said, I hate it, but yeah, we're at worst, that point. The worst thing is cutting jobs, and that's the first thing you know you open with is we got to cut jobs. I had a smart gentleman mm -hmm. tell me he said it was either a penny now or dollars later. Yeah. And I really feel that way. I mean, e either we do pennies now or it's going to be dollars later. And I think it's important to note, you know, you mentioned cutting jobs. We have cut, like I said, we've cut, uh, at the end of this month, it'll be 16 full-time positions, I think, that we've had that we've uh, not rehired when someone's retired. So we've, we've made an effort to, to reduce the number of staff. In some places, we can handle that reduction. Right. Some places are hurting and having a little trouble now, but they know this is what we have to do. How is our ratio with law enforcement? I know. Like the state troopers and everything is pathetic. What's happening? I can't tell you that. And anybody in here that lives here for very long can tell you our response time is terrible sometimes because of the amount of people we have working. We and probably got what half of what we need. Probably ninety percent of the time, there's four people to cover this whole county. Well, I will say this, Sheriff. Having moved from another area, moved here, and. I know when I first came here, Mr. Miller was in, but I have seen more law enforcement presence up here in the last few years. Since we, even if it's just one vehicle, and of course, not to mention what Wayne does with our just being out there visible with our community. So but we ain't afraid of Wayne. But <laughs> <laughs> I know, and that's why I bring it up because, in terms of, you know, I know how serious and how dire our law enforcement protection and, and resources for you are. They're horrible. And when you look at what the state troopers are looking at, it's it's just pathetic. And yet when you call 911, you want somebody there an hour ago. Mm -hmm. So these are... That's our biggest complaint is response time. And it's because the county is so big. You've got yeah. two places <coughs> across the river, no matter where you're at. Um, and then, like I said, from 12 noon till 12 at midnight, if everybody's working, you've got five cars. Most of the time, somebody's going to be on vacation or sick, or we've got a, a trip out of the county where we have to go, maybe go to prison, and they got to spend the night because it may be all the way to South Alabama. Sometimes there's only three cars left. You know, And it, it I'll be honest with you, it is hard to do this. And Dennis can tell you, he, he was there 20 years, he knows what I'm talking about. It's hard to do the job that, that we want to do for you with you know, limited uh, equipment. <coughs> so will any of that 1% tax goes towards our law enforcement? That's what, mm -hmm. with the resource officers, we hope uh, to supply, again, the protection for schools, but also mm -hmm. to help that will allow for a little bit more flexibility with the Sheriff's Department to allow some more officers at the roads at different times. If we're able to get the resource officers during the off season, then the Sheriff can use them as needed. And plus, they'll be on the road and on call, just like the other deputies when they're not in the school. So. Well, I think law enforcement should be 100% right on the top of that. You know, even, I know the roads are important, but I figure it out the roads, truthfully. I, mean, I know a lot of people wouldn't agree with that, but that's just, you know, my feelings. Yes. Yeah. Uh, do we have the money to do the eighty thousand dollars for the special election, or where are we going to get that money? Uh, we have a cash balance. We have our piggy bank that's sitting, you know, sitting there, and that's all we have. That's why we we can't afford to do another couple years of this deficit. You know, once that piggy bank's gone, it's gone because we have no new revenue. And that's all we have in it is eighty thousand. No, no, we have we have a, a about after this year, we'll probably have about one point eight million dollars in that piggy bank. So you have to yeah, so it, we feel, again, it's worth the investment. If we were to wait another year, we'd have no choice but to go ahead and cut services because to, to take another 400000 or if TVA and Lewin tax goes down further, another 500000 wait another year to not pave roads because we don't know what's going to happen, we feel that investment is necessary to go ahead and get it done uh, and, and uh, know sooner rather than later what we need to do to move forward. If we have to make the cuts, they need to be made sooner because we can't continue on the... the process we've been on. And if, if we felt we could balance the, the deficit without hurting, it may be able to do that, but I think we've got to the point where the only only other way is for it to hurt and we want to give that opportunity to the people to decide first. The county is not broke. I mean, we have capital to operate on, but we're doing all we can with what resources we have, and it's inadequate when there's not being able to do what we need to be doing. Did you say the property tax is the main source of money 
That's the primary source. I think we get, is it $2.7 million a year on property tax? That's our primary uh, source of income. Well, well for, for general fund, uh, largest is actually gas tax, which is about $3 million for, uh, for our public works department. But all of that property tax don't go to the county. Very small. Well, well, that all that part does. Yeah, okay. that's that's for our. That's our percentage. On a hundred thousand dollar house, uh, the county would get sixty dollars on. Uh, if I'm remembering the numbers right, you might remember. Uh, on a hundred thousand dollar house, uh, out in the county, the county general fund would actually see, receive sixty dollars off of what you paid on, them. and then the school I think was a hundred dollars. Uh, the fire was twenty dollars. Uh, the hospital is thirty dollars. I'm rounding off, but it, on two hundred fifty-one dollars that you would pay on a hundred thousand dollar house, the county would receive about sixty dollars. What I'm really getting at, the property owners is paying for the county for the tax people spending their tax. Everybody should be contributing to the right. county yeah. instead, so instead, instead of just the property tax people. More spread, right. yeah. Everybody should be contributing some. Yeah, with a, with a sales tax, not you know your property owners obviously pay something, but the biggest benefit of having a sales tax as opposed to property tax, folks that come from outside the county spend money in Jackson County, and there are a lot of dollars spent. You know, you talk about the hotel or, or fishing tournaments. There's a lot of dollars spent in Jackson County from from folks that come and visit, and uh, you know that's a takes a lot of the burden off of taxpayers here in Jackson County to be able to do it that way. So that's why, you know, that's a benefit. Plus, as your economy grows, it grows. Hopefully you can keep up with your roads and services and everything else, whereas a, a property tax doesn't grow necessarily as the economy grows. <coughs> Other questions? Do you have any estimates on what, about how much per person this, this would cost? We've done the estimates, what did we say, $60? took $3.3 million, that, that's truly what we bring in, and you divide that by, was it 53,700 people, you're looking at about $60 per person. But that's not counting the people that's from out of county? That's not counting anybody coming in from out of, out of county, and it's not counting anything like home building. You know, I mean, you build a $200,000 house, you're going to buy a lot of stuff for that house, and, you know, so probably more like 20 or $30. Per my own, I think my own, looking at my own thing, based on what I spend is about $30 per person in my household. So that's more realistic to what you're looking at, an extra $30 per person in your household per year uh, on this, and maybe even less than that. That will be cheaper than property tax. Yes, yes, property tax would cost you... Uh, uh, Our property tax would have to over double to, to generate the same amount of revenue. Why does the county not have a building department and collect monies on building permits and inspections? We, uh, you're talking about for uh, when someone is actually building a home building, or building like a, new homes, home construction, or we, you we, know, yeah, remodeling we, of any substantial over X amount of dollars. We don't have any zoning ordinance or anything like that in place. What we do have is a business license, um, and we do have a uh, subdivision ordinance. The biz a business license thing, which is the closest thing we can relate to that. In other words, you, you decide you're going to open a business, uh, you know, X, Y, Z, or you're going to do contracting and build a home. We have some enforcement on that, but the dollars we get off of those licenses are pennies. It doesn't pay for that position at all, just on just on that. Um, but there are no ordinances in place uh, to, to do that. Anything like that would take an act of the legislature also. Um, and it's never been pursued. I don't think that's something. That's well, I know the city of Scottsdale, like their permits and a lot of their stuff is like one of the highest in the whole area. Yeah. I mean, Maybe. Guntersville, Huntsville, Gadsden, all of them. That's a benefit to living in the county. You don't have the, you know, those fees. Well, it's a are, benefit, but it's lost revenue. Yeah, it, in a sense it is. But again, you know, we could pursue that. To me, a sales tax would still be a little bit more of something that would benefit as opposed to. Now that's another fee that you could add on, but I don't know, it adds more fees and more things of what is it I'm paying for. So your sales tax is the only thing you're looking at to raise revenue. You don't have anything else to come up with? We, uh, we've talked about a lot. We've looked at, uh, you know, last year we looked at a $5 tag fee. Um, that would 
balance our deficit and that's it. It would not get us enough money to, to do roads or anything else with. So that, you know, clearly wasn't going to do enough. We looked at property tax. Again, the big problems with that, uh, and you guys may have some additional points, but the big problems from the property tax, again, it's only going to affect people here in Jackson County. It does, you know, all again, all those people that come from outside of Jackson County on the sales tax we benefit from. Um, on a property tax, it's not a growth tax. So we could put it in place, but, you know, it may be 10 years and we're going to be coming back asking you for more money because, again, the cost of pavings continue to increase or whatever else. So uh, with a sales tax, it grows. A lot of these other fees and things, they're minuscule and they don't grow near as much. I've had uh, a lot of comments about, you know, you know, try this fee or that fee, but if you really look at some of these different alternatives, even something like that building thing, it would be great, but you'd need about 20 other fees or you know several other fees in place to help draw the same amount of revenue that you would from a sales tax. So uh, uh, we, we feel this is a very concise, very clear way. It's easy to explain how this affects people, I think, uh, in their daily lives. Uh, and it's, you know, hopefully it's a solution to our problem for years to come as opposed to something that, you know, like property tax, which is, again, not going to grow as fast and we may have to come back and ask for more later. Does that kind of answer your question? We've, we've looked at a lot of different things. Um, most of my work experience in retail has been in DeKalb County. I know they're up to 10% now. Mm -hmm. What are you going to? Uh, in certain municipalities, it'll be 10%. That'll be the, the highest in Jackson County will be at 10%. That'll be Scottsboro, Stevenson, Bridgeport, and a couple of the other municipalities around. Uh, is you know what Pisgah is, Mayor? Nine. 9%, Nine so that'll put Pisgah at 10% also. Um, some of the other communities be lower. Out here in the county, for something that's not an incorporated area, this will be 7%? Yeah, yeah it'll, it'll go to 7%. So, unincorporated. So it'll be anywhere from 7% being the lowest to 10% being the highest, depending on where you do your business. So will only 7% come back to Rosalie, or will we, will we get the same amount of money as Scottsburg? Well, the, out of that 1%, I can't say that we're going to give you, you know, it, to track the sales and all that, I can't say we're going to give you exactly how much you're going to see. Again, the goal is to not say any co that communities are just benefiting from what goes on in their community. The goal is that every community benefits from what's going on throughout the county. Uh, obviously, Scottsboro is the big, would be the, uh, where all the tax dollars, most of the tax dollars would be coming from. But we're not going to say, Scottsboro, here's your check for this amount of money. Um, uh, uh, because that's where all the shopping's done, you know, but people in the county shopping in Scottsboro, that needs to go back to those communities in the county as well. So it's, it's going to be spread around the county as far as what our investments conclude. The new road that's being built, this side of the Daily Sentinel, is the county paying for that? No way. The bridge? No, no the access, road. access road. Oh, no, no, that's a city project. City of Scottsboro's uh, okay. done that. We haven't put any, any funds or resources into that. Okay. I want to add something to that real quick about the property taxes. When we, when we were involved in recruiting industry, the first thing a company asks you to do is abate their taxes for X amount of time. Every time we do that, you cut your nose, spice your face. It's taking revenue out of our property tax stream just to recruit these industries, just to recruit the jobs. We're going to continue doing it. Whatever it takes to recruit, we've committed to doing that. But understand, our revenue stream of being property taxes, every time we do it, we cut our revenue. So, so your, your, your back's against the wall. Um, I just want to make sure that was pretty clear about that because we're going to continue doing it. Whatever it takes to recruit industry is what we've committed to do. But it takes money out of our revenue stream every time we do it. I've got another question. This may be a question I have to ask, ask tax people, but I've been told that if we go to Scottsboro and buy something, if we can prove we're, we live in the county, can we make them charge us the 7% instead of the 10%? No, if you have it delivered to you, then they can charge you the county tax. If you That's changed for cars now. Say that again. It's changed for cars now. But on lumber, I know, yeah, like on, on building a house, uh, if I had it delivered to the job site, it, I only pay the, the 6 cents of sales tax. If I go to 
If I take a trailer to Scottsboro and pick it up, I pay the nine cents. Okay. Right. So if you went and bought appliances and they delivered them to you, you can get the seven percent instead of if it's a delivered item. Yeah. Appliances may not. Seven percent now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, That's large appliances may apply. Yeah. yeah. If it's a delivered item. So that should give people a good idea for me to shop at home if they can. Right. In the count. Right. Other questions? Yes, sir. It's burning on all right. How long has it been since we've had a property tax hike? I don't even remember. That's a very good when question. School tax. What's that? When school tax. When was that uh, five years ago? Fifteen, five twenty years ago, the biggest part of it. Oh, this one about five or six years ago. The, there was a, my understanding was there's a state law that lived, that said this is the base amount education can receive for taxes. That base amount was 10 mil, is that correct? Uh, so when that law was passed, and that's been five or six years ago, uh, that was the last uh, tax hike that occurred on property taxes. So I don't know what they were before, but the education portion went to 10 mil uh, from whatever it was. That was the last hike we had. Was that the time when the uh, biggest part of that money went to the volunteer fire department? No, that all of that, all of those dollars from that one went to education. Well, I remember one of them went to the volunteer fire department. Yeah, that there's was a, the early 80s. Yeah, there's a yeah the early 80s. There's a two mill property tax uh, that that the county adopted and then several uh, municipalities adopted. Uh, that goes strictly towards fire departments. That's the funding source that's been changed this year. It's causing a lot of hardship on some of these smaller departments. Other questions, comments, concerns, criticisms? <laughs> Are you going to be able to get this through this legislature? Uh, we've, the legislature's done, you know, they've, they've uh, worked with us very well. Um, they've said that they would push this through to get this before a vote of the people. Of course, once, once they get it through, it's still our responsibility. This is something the county is asking for. And it's our responsibility then to ask for the uh, referendum to go to the people. So uh, we hope that we'll see that get to the legislature here in the next several uh, next few weeks. Um, but yeah, they they committed to doing their best to get it through as long as there aren't any other issues in Montgomery. We agree to bring it to you when you can vote for it or against it, and then that's all the legislature. The delegation would not impose any tax, and that that but they give you the right to go to the polls. Could the commissioners on their own raise the taxes? No. We don't we don't have authority to raise they really any fee. I wouldn't do it. Well Yeah, this any any and that's another part about you know asking about what other fees. Any fee that we would raise would have to go through the legislature. And if we started asking people for, you know, three or four different fees, I think we'd have a much bigger opposition than saying here's one thing that, you know, is easy to, to lay out there. Um, four or five different taxes, I think people would be probably even more upset with. Not that people aren't now, but uh, I think that'd go over less well. Yeah, but if you market it at $5 a month per household or per person, whatever, as opposed to 1% sales tax, if people really understood that. That's a cup of coffee, and right. Well, you know, yeah, but. it's almost two dollars per person per household. I mean, it's really it, it, it is uh, it, for the benefit that we believe this is going to give to Jackson County, the citizens of Jackson County, and for what you pay. Uh, I think it's a tremendous benefit, especially uh, for those folks that live out in the county, because right now we don't get any sales tax. So you know, it really does make a huge difference and a huge benefit. <coughs> It'll vary from household to household. How much it is. You got to look at it. The people that's coming through, they want to put tax money on it. If we go to outside our county, we're giving them people our tax money. Right. So it's all people coming in, let them pay the sales tax on it. Any other questions, comments? I hope I hope this has been in, informational, you know, about what we're pursuing. Like I said, whether you're for or against this tax, and we sure hope you're for it, <laughs> uh, but whether you're for or against it, please, you know, take this information. If you've got more questions, feel free to ask us. 
the big thing is that we want to be, we, we have been and will continue to be as open as possible with any of the information. All you have to do is ask. If it's calling a commissioner up, if it's calling a commission off, it's coming to the commission office. Uh, uh, hopefully, again, we can provide more information online so that you can look at it. But we want you to understand how your county government works. That's why we're here tonight. And we're going to continue to do these things regardless of what happens because you need to know. You need to understand what we're doing. And, of course, we need to know what concerns and issues you have so that we can try to address those. Uh, so, you know, hopefully we have all that information to, or you, you've received some of that information tonight um, to, to share. So, real quickly, uh, if there aren't any other questions, we'll go through with the uh, elected officials see if there's any, anything to add. Anything else? Yes. Did you say for person if they less than fifty dollars a year tax on average per person we're estimating um well my estimates is about thirty dollars okay. if you took it strictly to just people in jackson county it'd be about 60 but we know a lot of folks come in from outside we know some people don't shop in jackson county to live in jackson county that's part you know the, the gas tax thing please buy your gas here that's that's so important that you spend those dollars here to help our roads when you go to spend them in georgia or tennessee or uh, DeKalb county or wherever else that, that hurts our road system because they're getting our tax dollars. Um, so that, that's an important aspect of this too. But uh, uh, we want to provide more shopping opportunities so that folks can, you know, sometimes you got to leave the county. That's just the nature of it. We don't have everything we, that you may want. But where you can, please try to spend those dollars here. Anything else? All right, we'll start, uh, we'll start down down yonder with the probate judge. Do you have anything, uh, Mr. Probate Judge? Yeah, I do. Um, we, we were just talking, and uh, uh, I know that it mentioned about um, the sheriff and, and how many men he has and how many he don't have. <coughs> and I wanted to mention that, uh, that uh, we, we uh, deal with the cuts in the state standard, it cuts everywhere, not the you know, you all do the best you can, but mental health has been hit hard, and it's going to continue to be hit hard. And we have a lot of people in this county that, that, that suffer from mental illness. Um, some of you may have friends or family. So we, uh, we pick up a lot of people. I do orders and touch in the deputy and they pick them up and we bring them to the hospital and, and we have to hold them there and get them evaluated and see if we can get them help. So I know that the sheriff don't have any deputies. So me or I got a couple of people that work for me, we go and sit with them because uh, the nurses can't sit with them. They've got other sick people. So we sit with them so Chuck can get his deck back out on the road. So, you know, if, uh, you know, I, I worry that if I lose any people, that, I mean, you could lose a deck too, because if I don't have people that I can send over there to let Chuck put his deck back out on the road, I mean, you may be losing another deck on the road. Judge, how many, how many nights a week do you do that? Because I know. On average, about five. Yes. Yeah. If you're talking. Normally six to eight hours a day, somebody's there. So before Victor was probate judge, always had a deputy to do that. So he, he is helping us tremendously by, by going down there himself and sitting. Are you talking about like the Baker Act? Is he talking about like under the Baker Act? He's talking about I don't know about I don't know Baker Act. But he, he issues pickup orders for us to go pick up people to be evaluated. Well, a lot of these people may be drunk or they're on pills or something. Mm -hmm. So they have to get all of that out of their system before they can be evaluated. I can't put those people in my jail under that condition. So we have to babysit in the ER with them until they get sober. Mm -hmm. And then mental health has to come evaluate them. If they say, okay, yeah, they, they need some help, then we've got to take them wherever that is, out, and that's going to be outside the county somewhere. I live out of county, so I, I, I don't want to be the cost of you know, somebody breaks in my house and I've got Chuck's deputies in there doing something about it. About so my point is, I do it, I've got some of my people that help do it, and if I lose more people and I can't send people over there, the in effect, I'm going to be losing more people. And, and I, I mean, that's just that's just what, we've done that from the beginning, and I, and I did that to help the sheriff, and, and I think they know that I do it. And I don't do it ever, ever time. I mean, sometimes I just can't, but... I guarantee you 90% of the time I do it so they don't have to. So we all, I promise, I know they've mentioned what the commission has done to, to try to deal. And I think the whole courthouse has. Don't you all know? I think we have. 
That's the thing. We, we wouldn't even be where we're at if it weren't for all the elected officials, all our department heads making, uh, you know, the sacrifices we've had to make so far. And and the good thing is we've been able to do that without showing, hopefully, showing too much uh, uh, cuts to the citizens. Uh, but we've, you know, we kind of limited to that extent now. But uh, yeah, it, we wouldn't be where we're at if it weren't for things like that and things that all the department heads and. And, and elected folks, we've come a long way because everyone's given a little bit. With that being said, thank y'all for that food. That was really good. Not too much. Sheriff, Mr. Manny, did you have? Yeah. Uh, I asked Chairman if I could just say something to you guys tonight. So. Uh, uh, I am the county administrator, if you don't know, Bob Manning, so uh, I've been doing this job now for almost two years. Uh, but I do want to kind of give my perspective on this, because I'm not an elected official. I do live in the, in the county. I graduated at Scottsboro, I graduated at Northeast State, graduated at Athens State. <coughs> so basically, I'm as bad as local as you can get, I guess. I've lived here all my life. I support a 1% sales tax, and I wanted to share the reasons that I'm that my feelings are that way. The current commission that I'm working with, I'll assure you, they're concerned with how these tax dollars are being spent now. I can't speak for what previous commissions, other legislators in years gone by, I can't go back and speak for any of those, and they can't either. But things happen through the years, and, and we're, as I say, we're dealt with the hand that we're, we're, we're holding right now. Uh, I personally do not understand any logic of leaving the county government completely out of our sales tax distribution. I just, I don't see the logic in that. But, uh, that's what's happened here. As, as everybody has looked at, we've got the charts. I'm spending most of my money at the little town I live in or at Scottsboro. When I'm buying something in Scottsboro, I'm paying 9%. Four's going to the state, three's going to the city, two's going to the schools. Not one penny comes to this commission. Now that's the facts, whether we like it or not. <clears throat> the 9% hurts a little bit, but we're getting zero of that. Uh, the reason I support this, this one penny will go to our county government to run the government functions that we feel like needs to be run and to improve the county. Uh, I'm paying a dollar nine now, I'll pay a dollar ten because I know this extra penny is going to county government to help run our government. And I've worked in the business sector for 28 years in Huntsville, so I fought the rat race down there in Huntsville. And before I took this job, I might have also thought, well, they don't need that extra penny. I may have been guilty of thinking that, but I'll assure you, I've looked at a lot of things over the past two years. I know the state that our county is in, and, uh, and I know the guys I'm working with right now. I know the problems that we're facing in the near future with what's happening with TVA and Lua taxes and with some other situations in our county. I know what's coming down the road if we don't <coughs> consider an option to help fund some of this. Uh, again, like I mentioned, taxable income, we touched on it. I wanted to make sure we, un we understand that, that we're, we're not getting any of the sales tax in any community, in any municipality, anywhere in this county. Uh, monthly, co monthly collection all comes to my office. We turn right around and write two checks. And I've got a copy of the letter right here that comes from the state each year. If anybody would like to get a copy of it. 69% of that money goes to the Jackson County Board of Education. 31% goes to the Scottsboro City Board of Education because that's the only two Board of Educations in our county. That's the way the sales tax is spent. And I just want to make sure that's clear and that everybody understands it. I've talked to a lot of people over the past couple of months, and I haven't found anyone that knew that that was the case. So I want to make sure we understand that. Uh, and to those 
that may say, well, everything is too high in Jackson County. There's 67 counties in the state of Alabama. 26 counties already have a higher tax rate than 2%. Most of them are at 3%. Some of them are 4.5%, and they call it a special sales tax at that point. All right, so uh, there's 26 higher than we are. There's 22 currently at 2%. I hope I'm not bored of you guys, but I want to get the facts to you. There's 22 counties that are at 2% just like we are. 11 of those counties get money from the sales tax in their general fund to operate county government. We don't. There's 19 counties that are lower than 2%. Uh, 10 of those counties get money into the general fund to operate uh, their government. So, again, that's the facts, guys. It's, you know, 26 counties are already there. Um, previously, I think we cleared up uh, average households, 37,540. I think last meeting we mentioned that somebody would be paying another 375 on tax. I think the chart Mr. Hodges went over cleared that up. Basically, what the chart says is 77% of your money is not spent on sales tax applicable items in the average household. Some of them are. Some of them spend more of that. Naturally, some people make a lot more money than that. Some people make less than that. But that's the average. And I pulled that information right out of Forbes. And I think that's, that's, you know, you need to understand that. It's not everything that you're grossing. It's just what's applicable to sales tax. It's about, <coughs> roughly about 23%. County roads, I'm not going to beat that dead horse. I think we've all discussed county roads and what we're facing there. So, uh, but I do want to take a minute to touch on our volunteer fire departments because we take these people for granted, I think. And I live out in the county. Most of the small towns that are out in the county also, if you dial 911 with an emergency in your household, you're going to get a local volunteer there. This guy's not paid a dime. He's working a job just like we are. And to me, that's a very unselfish service that they provide. That I know I took that for granted. But uh, those guys are getting up at midnight. They're getting up in bad weather. They're going out on the weekends. And sometimes they're helping save a life. And that's, out in the county, that's our guys. They're going to need help, I'll assure you, in the future. Their funds have been cut, and they're going to continue to climb, and they're going to need some assistance. And I think it's well worth it to, to look at that, those guys. I've seen them in action. I know what they do, and again, I took them for granted for a long time. I think we all agree we're living in a very dangerous world. It's getting more dangerous by the day. We touched on we want to provide a safer environment for our teachers and our students out in the county. Uh, yes, there'll be a cost for that. It's not going to come easy, but I do feel like that those teachers and those students deserve the same attention and the same resources at least to be looked at to give them protection that some other places do have. Uh, and we also, the county commission also, also supports the Jackson County 4-H program. I didn't know that <laughs> went to work there, but, but we support that. And that program is ongoing in our schools because of the commission. Uh, again, just I want to Thank you guys for coming out. I enjoyed the food like everybody else. But we're trying to be transparent. We're trying to share information. I take my job serious. And uh, I know with the guys I'm working with you now, they're concerned with your money. And uh, we're not just trying to come up with something. And I'm sure we'll have a lot more discussion on this as we go forward. But I wanted to give you a viewpoint from somebody that's not elected, somebody that's worked in the business, and I've heard this statement said, boy, if they would just run that like a business, it would be so much better. Believe me, I said the same thing. And I realized I can't run this like a business. It would be good if we could, but 
There's some situations where our hands are tied and there's local law in place, there's statutes in place, and we we can take business principles and try to apply them, but we uh, there is a distinct difference, and believe me, I have learned that in the past two years. And I want to thank you guys again. Thank everybody here. Thanks for listening to me, and that's all I've got. Just want to thank everybody for coming out, and thanks for the, the wonderful food that was provided. And uh, if you didn't get enough at this meeting, you're welcome at all commission meetings. I think our next community meeting is going to be in Macedonia uh, two weeks from today. Uh, you're welcome to any of our meetings and or to call any of us uh, anytime. But thank you uh, for letting us come out here. Thank you, Mr. I want to say one thing. I thank y'all for taking up your time to come out and discuss this with us and let us know about it and let us understand what is going on. We appreciate y'all. Everyone. Yeah, uh, we're going to have a dedication to our storm shelters <clears throat> on the third day of May, some Sunday afternoon from 1 to 3. Uh, the Rosalie community and the Rosalie school both got one. We had two shelters, and most of that help come from Victor Manning. We appreciate him helping us out with that. And we will be out here speaking that day with a few more speakers, and all of y'all are invited. Thank you. Third day of May, on Sunday afternoon, one to three. Thank you. Mr. Elias? Mr. Matthews, I thought you were going to skip me. Jim Paul said you were going to get away with that. Anyhow. <laughs> The numbers here, they, they said they appreciate it. We have so many board members where it's five board members, Mr. Harding, school secretary, CFO, and our attorney. And that's it. That's all the thing. And then we'll have some where we'll have that group plus two or three more. And every now and then we'll have one. We never have a number like this. Now, if everybody in this county was like Miss Wanda here and Miss Mary and all these other people I know raised that with everybody be voting in form. If they take the time to come out, I know people got to live in Maine, they have kids to take care of and all that, but but it's good that you're here. Yeah. One more thing that I know I think Mr. Ledman mentioned, one thing I'd like to ask you to do, when you hear these rumors, and when somebody makes a comment, and they don't stay in the sanity check, the light of day, call one of these guys sitting behind the table. Just call them. They, I, I will tell you, they're approachable, and they're not only approachable and receptive, they're out here all the time. I see them at the breakfasts. I see them in different places. Ask them the question. They'll tell you. And they want you to do that, too. They don't mind being asked hard questions. Uh, as a citizen, not as a board member, as a citizen, I hate to see the visibility go away. Uh, the guy sitting on the sheriff's left there told me during the tornado relief the importance of visibility in the community. They just don't do as much. We, didn't, we had a a couple of looting instances, maybe, during that 30 day period, if I remember right. It was because of trooper cars and county sheriff cars. And they stay in places, they don't they don't ride, they don't sit on 71 and 117 all the time. They're on County Road 14 at Liberty Hill Church, Cape Chapel Church, they get off. And that makes a difference. And I hate to see that go away. Of course, I'm like everybody else. We used to, when I was a boy, we referred to all these guys as road commissioners because we thought that's all they did on Sand Mountain. That was our job. That's what we call them. So that's what everybody's doing. Uh, I'm just glad it's coming back to the citizens of Jackson County so, so they, they can vote on it instead of the legislature. And I'll mention this guy sitting right here, Representative Haynes. He's, he's approachable. He's available. He's out there all the time. And he wants you to talk to him and give you ideas. And uh, he'll answer you. He's a, He's a good representative and he'll stand up. He does not mind you calling him and talking to him. And from the state side, he'll explain this thing to you inside of that. And again, thank you for being here tonight. I appreciate it. And I'll say one more thing. If you want to do this, this is the perfect example to see what we do with that 2%. Of course, we don't get all that. I think Scottsburg gets a third of that, isn't it, right? Uh, this school right here, we spent a lot of money here this year. Your money, not mine, your money. You can ask Ms. Williams, she'll tell you it's in good shape here. I told Mr. Kirby a while ago, my old retired principal, but it's a good place for him to ask me that question because I'll walk around and show him about $250,000 worth of your but, but, uh, but tomorrow, come back and ask me to be 15 things wrong. 
But the main thing is thanks for coming and thanks for educating yourself. And remember, when you hear the stuff, call the guys that know. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Yeah. I want to thank everybody for coming out too. Uh, I enjoyed the food. I really enjoyed everybody here. It, it's neat when people really communicate and ask questions and get involved. I love it when people get involved and ask questions. So uh, I hope all our meetings are like that. I hope we got 50 people at every one of our meetings. So I would just encourage you coming out and seeing all of you tonight. So I appreciate it. Thanks for the food. And I got a board member that I want to get turned in. Uh, okay. we'll it's all that. I guess. Thank you. Uh, Mr. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out too. Uh, you know, when I decided to run the county commission, I was no politician, don't know what came over me. Uh, I built housing to work all my life, and uh, you know, it's not the easiest thing in the world for me to speak in front of a bunch of people, but I love to see a bunch of people come out something like this. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Mr. Lane. I'd like to thank y'all too for coming out, expressing your opinions because it means a lot when other people get engaged in these conversations. Um, just a simple conversation can change the way you look at things. If we can assist you or help you, please don't don't hesitate. And thank you for the food and hospitality. Um, I appreciate it very much. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Lavell. Thank you all uh, for coming. And as as I say. Uh, you know, having these folks out, being involved, being involved is what makes a community a good community. That's why this is this is important. We really do appreciate you folks coming out. Uh, it's important if we really, you know, we want to take Jackson County better places like this. But even just the participation of having folks involved, that's you know that that makes it uh, a world of difference also. So we appreciate that. Um, I am going to probably ask for a motion at one of our subsequent meetings that we come up here every time. Maybe we can have some snacks. <laughs> we appreciate that hospitality as well very much. Um, again, as I said, we're, we're here. We want to talk to you. We're always available. We'll try to be always available. Sometimes it takes me a little time to return a call, but uh, I do my best to return all calls, and I know these guys do as well. So we'll, we'll continue to do our best to work for you, and, and we're open to you, as has been stated. So with that, uh, we'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. As opposed, say no.